Howdy folks, I'm Ash, you're watching Fiction Addiction, and this is the long-awaited return of the recommendation round, where I take a moment to pick up a particular subject and, well, recommend a few things from it. So congratulations, you've learned to comprehend the title. Anyway, today we're taking a look at some anime. Now, when people think anime, they usually think long-running franchises like Pokemon or Dragon Ball, Sailor Moon, Naruto, all of those things, and there are tons of those, that's true. But Japan does also produce a lot of unrelated animated feature films. And I'm going to mention a couple to you that I think everybody should check out. Oh, and just to keep things a little more interesting, none of these are from Studio Ghibli. Newest on the list is Keiji Hara's Miss Hokusai from 2015. Do you know how waves always look kind of like this in Japanese paintings? That's because they're based on the painting The Great Wave by real-life artist Katsushita Hokusai, who was arguably the most famous and influential artist in all of Edo period Japan. However, in this movie, the focus lies with his lesser-known daughter, Oe. Miss Hokusai is the fictional account of Oe's life under her father, who treats her a lot more like a student or an assistant than he does a daughter. Not that either of them really mind, since art very much takes up every waking moment of their lives. This becomes a problem for Oe when she's commissioned to do some erotic prints, but has so little experience with sex and seduction, and honestly, most aspects of everyday life, that her paintings come across as technically efficient, but cold and impersonal. In fact, her main connection to the world around her lies with her blind and frail little sister, who she tries to teach about the world. The film doesn't so much have a plot as it consists of a series of loosely connected fictional anecdotes about this real person's life, and does so to make a statement about the importance of art in Japanese culture. And to really get that point across, it occasionally, and beautifully, blurs the lines between reality, folklore, and art. This film is definitely not some kind of historical study, but it is a breathtakingly beautiful film that really makes you appreciate the arts and deserves way more attention in the West than it has gotten so far. Check it out! From another famous anime director, Mamoru Hosuda, we have 2012's Wolf Children, where a young student named Hana meets and falls in love with a nice young man. Who turns out to actually be a wolf man. Alright YouTube algorithm, come on! I need those furry views! The two have two children together named Ami and Yuki, whose wolf-like traits are a little bit hard to keep under wraps in the city. So when the wolfman tragically dies during one of his nightly excursions, Hana drops out of school and takes her children to an abandoned home in the country, where she does her very best to raise her children in peace. However, living so close to the wild may be calling to their more feral instincts. Much like with the previously mentioned Miss Hokusai, this isn't really a strongly plot-driven movie, as we mostly just follow these two well, wolf children, through their growth as they try to deal with their dual nature. And meanwhile, their mother does her very best to keep the wolf forms a secret and to deal with their children's very different personalities. The movie mostly serves as a look at parenthood and as a reminder that you never quite know what path someone's personal growth is going to take. But also as a reminder that as long as you try your very hardest, those that you love will most likely be fine. In closing, Wolf Children is perfectly packaged sweetness with just a little sprinkle of drama on top to keep things interesting. And it's definitely a great watch. Now, is everybody comfy after those two sweet little movies? Yeah? Oh, that's good. Because I'm about to tear down some comfort walls! Satoshi Kon sadly didn't live long enough to make a lot of movies, but those he made were amazing and full of style and great ideas, like Paprika or Tokyo Godfathers. But the one we're going to talk about right now, and my personal favorite of his works, is 1997's Perfect Blue. In Perfect Blue, we meet the idol singer Mima, who is getting a little tired of her cutesy pop icon status, and tries to break into serious dramatic acting via a hardcore, edgy crime TV series. However, as the subject matter of the series, and the less than glamorous role she has in it begins to take its toll on her, she realizes she's being stalked by an obsessed fan and apparently also by an internet blog written by her own pop star persona. Perfect Blue is a lot of things. It's tense, it's mind screwy, it's violent, it's unpleasant, it's occasionally downright vile, but most of all, it's a brilliant thriller that I can't tell you very much about without giving too much away. It also expertly puts the viewer in Mima's shoes by messing with the perception of reality right until the crazy ass climax. Let me try to sum this movie up with what might be the nerdiest sentence I've ever said. Perfect Blue is like if David Lynch decided to make an animated 70s Italian giallo movie and set it in 1990s Tokyo. Yeah, wrap your head around that one. To put it bluntly, Perfect Blue is a scary ass movie. And it's more than a bit of a masterpiece. Check it out if you think you have the stomach for it. And there you have it. Those are just three of the many, many anime movies out there that I think people should check out. 
Thanks a bunch for watching, you guys. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more top 10s, reviews, vlogs, and recommendations of all the nerdy media we all know and love. And please, go ahead and tell me about some more anime movies in the comments below. I'm always looking to expand the collection. I have plenty of themes ready for more videos like this, but if you have some suggestions, feel free to use this hashtag in the comment section or on Facebook or Twitter, both of which you can find links to in the description below. And while you're down there, if you want to show your support, you can also find a link to my Patreon page, where there might be ways to influence future videos. Keep that one on the down low. It's a secret. But that seriously is it for now, folks. So with that said, abayo!